Hello. Today we are working with a pattern rhombuses. This pattern has been shown by our famous well-known fancy worker Lyubov Vologda. I've been admiring it for quite a while and finally I've taken my time to try. The pattern comes out very interesting and as you can see it looks especially interesting when woven with the tubes of contrast colors. Here it merges a little while on this box it stands out more clearly. So what is important for this pattern? What you have to pay attention to? First of all, the poles have to be rigid, while the working tubes are better if they are soft and wet. As a rule, this pattern is woven in the middle. The frame is one colored. In this case, it is yellow. I have woven one row in the technique of the direct rope, another row in the technique of the opposite rope. And I'm passing to weaving the pattern. Cut one of the tubes. And now I have to define how to call them. I propose the following. One of the tubes will be called a background one. The second one will be called a pattern one. The one we will be weaving a pattern with. First of all, the number of the poles for this pattern have to be odd. It will allow you to form the accurate rhombuses. So, we have lengthened the pattern tube with a contrast color. As for the background tube, it has to be of the same color as the poles. So, the pattern tube goes outside. We embrace the background tube with it. Unbend the background tube a little and lead the pattern tube behind the pole. The background tube always goes in front. As for the pattern tube, we lead it behind the pole. Here we have led it from above. Then we place it on the background tube and lead behind the next pole again. Notice that here we were leading it from above. Now we lift it this way. It is very convenient when the pattern tube is wet. In this case it lies nicely. So, place onto the background tube Unbend the un background tube a little, lead the pattern tube behind the pole and place the background tube in front. Take the pattern tube again, lead it behind the next pole, this time from the bottom, bottom upwards, place onto the background tube and from top downwards behind the next pole. It is high time to lengthen. The yellow background tube doesn't necessarily have to be wet. As for the green pattern one, it is easier to work with it if it's wet. Lead it around the pole, place onto the background tube and lead behind the next pole. If you follow all the fine points, points like the odd number of the poles, rigid poles and wet pattern tube, then it is not hard to weave and the pattern forms neatly. And continue repeating the same actions. bottom upwards at first, lead round the pole, place onto the background tube, top downwards. Again lead the pattern tube bottom up 
and lead it top down. Lengthen the tube, reach the joint. And because we have the odd number of the poles, the pattern forms as it goes. We don't have to do anything special for it. We used to have halves of the rhombuses, and finally we are getting the first whole rhombus. You see, here it is. In the process of working, I try to press weave into the form and to adjust it with my fingers sometimes, because this pattern is not the easiest one. I mean, if you don't adjust it, some tubes can fold and it will not look neat anymore. You see, two background tubes have to adjoin each other tightly. This way, and form the rhombuses. And I try to view about four rows of rhombuses like here. And the casket is ready.